law. Starting in Genesis, Exodus, rather, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 17. Go ahead. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. No is manservant, no is maidservant, no is ox, no is ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. Now let's go into Ecclesiastes, 12th chapter. Read verses 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Let's go into Revelation, chapter 22, read verses 14 and 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So praise God for the reading of the law. Yeah. And this has been a rough morning for me, sisters and brothers. I got up this morning, first thing I did, I went out to the car, got ready to leave, and I noticed I didn't have my briefcase. So I went in to get my briefcase, but then I forgot that they hadn't written out the subject for the next week's lesson, so I wrote out the subject and still went and got in the car and still left the briefcase. <laughs> then I turned around, and find out that I had two history books in this lesson, didn't bring them with me. So if you saw me scrambling, it's because we have some books here where I was able to find these two books. And I have some, uh, and some more information, didn't bring, it was in my briefcase, but they happened to have it recorded on the computer. So I didn't know getting 80 make you forget this quick. <laughs> so <laughs> if this is the case, then I said by the end of the month, I'm going to be wondering who I am. <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe it. How do you go in the house and get a briefcase and forget to get it? <laughs> no, you don't make the mistake when you're going after something and forget it. But anyway, we're going to get right into this lesson, sister and brother. This lesson is right on time. Because all I'm hearing now, we have this big Hebrew Israelite flap. And all people jumping on, telling me it's time to go back home and it's time for us to leave. People out there advertising, let's go to Ghana, let's go here, let's go there. But I never heard, no, and, and, and uh, I never heard anybody say, you know, maybe uh, Ghana and South Africa. And Zimbabwe is not where we came from. We came through these people. And then some of them said, some are saying, let's go to, uh, uh, 
the land till the time is up. You know, and some quotes the 400 years, which was talking about Egypt. We're going to show you that. The Lord lets you know what time that we will return, sisters and brothers. And all this talking about what's going on, like when Russia, Russia jumped to Ukraine, everybody said, uh-oh, it's time to go call me, telephone ringing. I said, do you see the abomination in the, standing in the whole place? Nope. I said, then relax. The Lord have called this thing, sisters and brothers. Everything is in order. Nothing is going to happen until this time. And for you to go to the land would be the worst thing that can happen if you go to Israel right now. And then again, to these other people that's talking about going to certain spots on Africa, that is not your home. That is not where you came from. You didn't come from Africa. You came through Africa. Y'all understand? Your land is Israel. It used to be long to the children of Africa, the Canaanites. They was Hamites. They came out of hell. But the Lord dis disinherited them and gave us his land. And it's named after us, the land of Israel. So when you hear all of these people running around talking about it's time for us to go, you know, it's time to go home. Even got people in, in certain areas like Liberia talking about come on home. And we actually have people are selling their properties and, and, and uprooting themselves and going to Africa. I just say, well, wait till the chips go down. You find out that this is the best place for you right now. It's all that simple. I've said it many times, since I had to be a slave anywhere, I'm glad I was a slave here. Because I know what happened to the other slaves in other places. You hang out into black history, you're going to find out. It's not about color, sisters and brothers. It's about the curse. It's all that simple. But we're going to get into this, and the title of this lesson is a long title. But I did it because I wanted people to understand. And the title of this lesson is, Jesus cannot return, nor can Israel be gathered before the times of the Gentiles is fulfilled? Simple as that. Jesus cannot return, nor can Israel be gathered before the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Who are the Gentiles? Those are the people who call European or white folks. Each one of Noah's son was given an opportunity to run this earth. First one was Ham. Drop the ball. Then he gave it to Shem, out of which Israel came, dropped the ball, and now it's in the hands of the Gentiles. They're dropping the ball too. But until their time is up that God gave them, you can scream, holler, you can exercise, what do they call it, in the streets, do all kind of boycotting, all kind of marching. But until this time is up, the Gentiles run it. You understand? People have not read the Bible, so you get out there and you talk crazy and bring some drama to yourself, wonder why the Lord let this happen. The Lord told you when he had Jeremiah to write the first captives that Nebuchadnezzar took down to Babylon, he had Jeremiah to write, to write them, Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, to write them a lesson. He said, look, when you're in this land, Give your sons in marriage, give your daughters in marriage, and take and your sons take your daughters for marriage. Build houses so you won't become extinct. And he said, seek the peace of the city, for that is your peace. Mm -hmm. So now if you want to get out and break the peace and drama come on you, you want to say, woe is me. Woe was you when God ordered you, offered you the top position on the planet and you turned it down by breaking his law. That's when your woe started. And your woe is not going to stop until the Lord that put you in captivity come and take you out of captivity. But until that time come, the Lord said, we're going to serve Nebuchadnezzar's son and his son's son. I just want to put reality on the table. Because everybody crying and whining now. Why don't this happen? Look what's happening. Look at what it's doing with this ball player. Look at this rapper. Look at what's going on. Why are they doing this? They, look, this is the times of the Gentiles. 
And then one thing was happened under the Gentiles, Edom have always worked with the Gentiles. Always, in every generation. We got lessons to show you that. Just like most people don't understand that King Herod, that was appointed as king of Judea by the Romans, was an Edomite. The same people that called themselves Jews. So they always work together. So the best thing you can do is find out about your God and do what your fathers fail to do, and that's obey his law. But we're going to start this in Genesis 15 chapter. Genesis the 15 chapter. Because this thing is called, sisters and brothers, by the Lord, and it's going to end up the same way that the Lord wanted it to be. Because this is, what he was, this is the Lord talking to Abraham now. Genesis 15 and verse 1. Genesis 15 and verse 1. Okay, read. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Uh-huh. And Abram said, Lord God, what would thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of mine house is this Eliezer of Damascus? Now, he told him, so look, I'm your... Uh, Lord tell him, I'm the one that, you know, I'm your great reward. But he said, what you going to do for me? I don't even have a child. And the one that's going to inherit my uh, uh, benefits, uh, this guy this, uh, from, uh, from Damascus. Then the, guy, then the Lord told him. Go ahead and read. And Abram said, behold, to me thou hast given no seed. Uh -huh. And lo, one born in my house is mine heir. So what you going to give me? I don't even have a child. Go ahead and read. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, uh -huh. This shall not be thine heir. Go ahead. But he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. So look, this guy's not going to be your heir. The one that you're going to have by your wife, that's going to be your heir. Go ahead and read. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven, uh -huh. and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. Go ahead. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. Go ahead. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. So now he told Abraham, look at the stars. You're going to have so many children, you can't, you're not going to be able to count them like you can't count the stars. And Abraham believed God. And that's when he said it was counted for righteousness. Go ahead and read. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the land of Chaldees to Go give ahead. thee this land to inherit it. He says, so now, the land that you in, which was the land of Canaan, <clears throat> I'm going to give this land to you. Skip down to verse 13. Go ahead. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, uh -huh. and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them, 400 years. And so and this is the thing that's the big evil that's coming up now. I mean, the land, they're going to be in the land that's not there. The land of strangers, and they're going to afflict them and serve them 400 years. And it's a big flap right now where you know the 400 years is up. But we're going to examine that a little bit too. But go ahead and read. 14. And also, that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterward shall they come out with great substance. And he said, though, he didn't say those nations, didn't he? No. He said, that nation shall they serve. And afterward they're going to come out with great substance. Go ahead and read. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Uh huh. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. Go ahead. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again. Uh huh. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. But he said, in the, but in the fourth generation, they're going to come back to the land of Canaan, which is called Israel. It hadn't been named that yet. He said, and this is something that nobody pays attention to. He said, because the Ammonite, Amorites, time have not been fulfilled. God gave everybody a time. And in another lesson we're going to show you, but not this one, that the first people that Moses them knocked off was the Amorites. Mm -hmm. But he said, you're going to, but in the fourth generation, they're going to come back to this place. In the fourth generation. Now let's go on to Exodus, the first chapter. Because we're going to show you a few things and we're going to look at these generations. Exodus chapter 1. Exodus chapter 1.
And we're going to start reading at verse 1. Exodus chapter 1 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. Now these are the names of the children of Israel, uh -huh. which came into Egypt. Every man in his household came with Jacob. Go ahead. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah. Uh-huh. Issachar, Zebulon, and Benjamin. Uh-huh. Dan and Naphtali, Gad and Asher. Go ahead. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls, for Joseph was in Egypt already. So he had 70 souls that came out of Jacob when they uh, out of, uh, that came out of Jacob that was in Egypt. Go ahead and read. And Joseph died, and all his brethren, and all their generation. Go ahead. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty. Go ahead. And the land was filled with them. So, you know, so we went out on 70, but we had babies like 90 going north. And all of a sudden you had Israelites everywhere. Go ahead and read. Eight. Now there rose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Uh-huh. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. So now, Joseph was the one that the Lord went out there to save Egypt and all the places, all the other nations around. Because he was made the second rule in Egypt. Like they have a corn they, on the back of the corn. We found an ancient corn with uh, Joseph face on it. Called him the viceroy of Egypt. Anyway, Joseph saved Egypt, but then Joseph died. And then down through the generation, there arose a pharaoh that didn't know Joseph. But he knew one thing. He was watching all them Israelites having babies. He said, they didn't come more and mightier than, I, than us. So now, unless... When we have a war, they're going to side with the enemies and break away from us. They weren't worried about them fighting. They worried about Israel breaking away because they had apparently got good to that good uh, uh, cheap labor because everybody used us for cheap labor. And Israel and the Egyptians never loved Israelite. Even when Joseph was viceroy, when he had his brothers come down and they set him down to have dinner. The Egyptians separated. They had to put place for the Egyptians to eat here, which, he was, which, which was under Joseph. But the Israelites ate different. You know why? Because the book said it was an abomination for an Egyptian to eat with a Hebrew, Hebrew Israelite. So they never really cared too much for Israel anyway, but they had that cheap labor. So they said, look. We better do something about these people because uh, they didn't got stronger than us. Now they can side with our enemy and they will break away from us. Go ahead and read what verse? 11. Uh-huh. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters uh -huh. to afflict them with their burden. Go ahead. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramesses. Uh-huh. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. That was a big mistake. Go ahead. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. Uh -huh. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. Now, this started, but they didn't serve on the, uh, with rigor. They made them a, a channel slave. They wasn't channel slave the whole time. And because that was the case, then they said it couldn't have been the 400 years. But sisters and brothers, there was one time that all Israel was in one place of captivity. And that was in Egypt. No other place. Now let's go into Exodus, the 12th chapter, because the Lord sprung Israel now. Exodus chapter 12. And we're going to look at the time that it was, they was down there. Exodus chapter 12. And we're going to start reading that verse 1. Exodus chapter 12. And we're going to start reading that verse 1. Okay, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, Go ahead. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. Go ahead. It shall be the first month of the year to you. That's why our months are different from the Gentiles' month. Because the Lord picked, he said, this month is going to be the first to y'all, not January, the month of Abel. 
Okay, go ahead. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. Go ahead. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the soul. Every man according to his eating shall make your account for the lamb. Now, you want everybody, I want everybody to get a lamb and put this lamb up because this is the lamb of the Passover. Go ahead and read. Your lamb shall be without blemish, uh -huh. a male of the first year. Go ahead. He shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. Now, this lamb represented Jesus. That's why I say he had to be perfect and he had to be the firstborn. Go ahead and read. And ye shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Uh-huh, go ahead. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the house, wherein they shall eat it. So now, this is what you have to do on, this is why the night of the Passover. Once you kill this lamb, you have to put the blood over your doorposts and on, and on your lintel because the Lord's going to come through there and let's see what he is going to recognize. Skip down to verse 12. Verse 12 and go ahead. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night uh -huh. and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Go ahead. Both man and beast. Uh -huh. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Go ahead. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And the blood shall be a token unto you where in the houses you are. This is a token of your faith, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. So he's going to pass through Egypt. He's going to kill the firstborn of everything there, man and beast. But when I see a blood, it should be a token upon your house. Go ahead. And when I see the blood. I will pass over you, uh -huh. and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. You notice he didn't say when I see the Hebrew Israelites. No. He said when I see the blood. That tells me that anybody that's under that blood, they are protected. Yeah. He said so when I see the blood, I'm going to pass over that house and I ain't going to smite the firstborn. That's what, that's what the word pass over means. He's going to pass over you. And don't kill you. The firstborn in this case. But skip down to verse 29. Verse 29. And go ahead. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Uh -huh. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon. Uh -huh. And all the firstborn of cattle. Go ahead. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in, the, in Egypt, uh -huh. for there was not a house where there was not one dead. So when all the Egyptians suffered a loss, then every house had a firstborn. And the Lord killed every Egyptian, firstborn and every Egyptian in the land. Not one was escaped. Go ahead and read. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise up and get you forth from among my people. Go ahead. Both ye and the children of Israel and go. Serve the Lord as ye have said. He said, now rise up, get from among our people, and go serve the Lord as you have said. So that's when they sprung Israel out of the land of Egypt. This is the whole nation now. Now skip down to verse 41. Verse 41 and go ahead. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the selfsame day, uh -huh. it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. So now Egypt was down for 430 years. There ain't no land, no place have all Israel been in captivity under anyone for that long, except for Egypt, sisters and brothers. Now, and as far as the evil treatment is concerned, let's go into Deuteronomy, the 26th chapter. Deuteronomy, the 26th chapter. Deuteronomy chapter 26. Deuteronomy chapter 26. Because we want to have a look at this sister and brother. Because we have people that have left the Israel of God because they're trying to make the 400 years of captivity be in America. And their premises is 
Well, you see, they, they weren't, we, we, you know, the Egyptians didn't treat them 400 years, evil treat them for 400 years. How do you know? You just know about the channel slavery. How many years were we, were we channel slaves in this country here? Anybody know? We wasn't here, we weren't channel slavery for 400 years, were we? Think about what I'm saying. 26 and 1, go ahead. And it shall be, when thou art come unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance, uh -huh. and possesseth it, and dwellest therein. Now when you come into the land, and dwelleth therein, skip down to verse 5 and go ahead. And thou shalt speak and say before the Lord thy God, a Syrian, ready to perish, was my father. Uh -huh. And he went down into Egypt and so joined there with the few. See, because Abraham came from Syria. That don't mean he was an Assyrian, just like I am an American. But that don't mean I am a, 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 a Gentile. This is my national. This is not. This is my nationality, but it's not my origin. You understand what I'm saying? Because I remember when I was in Hong Kong, when I took a break from Vietnam, and I went out there, and I was going to this part of Hong Kong, and I got, had some uh, Australians that said, hey, Yank, don't go down there, Yank, or they won't hear from you no more. So the Yank turned around <laughs> and didn't go down there. But he called everybody from America the Yank. You understand? Yankees. But anyway, he said, and, and, and uh you can assume my father was a Syrian. That means talking Jacob now. It's not Abraham this time because whatever your father is, that's what you are. Go ahead. And he went down into Egypt and so joined there with the few and became their nation, great, uh -huh. mighty, and popular. Go ahead. And the Egyptians evil and treated us and afflicted us and laid upon us hard bondage. Now I said, and the Egyptians evil and treated us and afflicted us and laid upon us hard bondage. The Egyptians. Go ahead. And when we cried unto the Lord God of our fathers, the Lord heard our voice. Go ahead. And looked on our affliction and on our labor and our oppression. Go ahead. And the Lord brought us forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm and with great terribleness and with signs and with wonders. And he brought us into this place and have given us this land, even a land that floweth with milk and honey. So he said, the Lord brought us out of here and he brought us back to this land. That means that they, they had gotten back in the land of Egypt, Israel now. As after they went to the wilderness for 40 years because they disobeyed God and he hung them out in the wilderness in a, in a thing that probably could have been in about two or three day trip. But anyway, he said, in the land of Egypt, and they even treated us for 400 years. Now, look, sister and brother. He said, Lord told Abraham they're going to come in the fourth generation. Now, let's see how this go. It can't be, the way I see it, it can't be, be nothing but the fourth generation from Abraham. And they're going to be sprung out of captivity. So, let's go into Matthew, the 21st chapter. The, uh, Matthew, the first chapter, rather, and we're going to look at these generations because they're supposed to go back to the land in the fourth generation. Four from who? Who was he talking to? He was talking to Abraham, didn't he? Yep. He didn't say they're going to bring them back in the fourth generation from the day that they went into captivity. He was talking to him. So if we want to know if America was a country that the Lord was telling Abraham that his children are going to serve for 400 years. Let's see what generation they came in. Matthews 1, and start reading that verse 1. Matthews 1 and verse 1. Matthews 1 and verse 1. Okay, read it. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, uh -huh. the son of David, the son of Abraham. Go ahead. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Judas and his brother. Now, we're not going to go with all that, but let's skip down to verse 17, and we're going to find and see what generations. 
Uh, 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 this was from Abraham. Verse 17, go ahead. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David unto the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations. Go ahead. And from the carrying away into Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. Go ahead. Now no, the birth of... Now, how many generations is that in all? 42 generations. That's way beyond four generations, isn't it? Yeah. And that's talking about uh, 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 from Aaron, uh, uh, from, uh, that's, and that stopped at Jesus, didn't it? Yeah. How many, how many, how, I'm wondering how many generations we are from Jesus to right now. Hmm. So it don't take a rocket scientist system, brother, to figure out this couldn't be talking about America. It was talking about fourth generation, but the, but the Muslim was teaching it, but the Muslim got it from us. Because Elijah Poo, which became the honorable Elijah Muhammad, was an Israelite before he was a Muslim. That's why all the teaching they got is old Israelite teaching like the white man is the devil. They got it from us. This is what people don't understand. But then, that's another story. So now, it was 14 generations, sisters and brothers, from Abraham, I mean, it's a 42 generation from Abraham to Jesus. So how could that captivity be talking about America? Simply cannot. Because if it was, don't you know we've been here more than 400 years? Y'all know that? How come we still here? That's the question that need to be asked, sisters and brothers. How come we are Still here. Because if that was talking about us, we would be gone. Because our captivity started with Nebuchadnezzar. Because Nebuchadnezzar, the Gentiles, what took down Israel's sisters and brothers. So why are we here? The Syrians took the nine tribes. And Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians took out the three tribes, which was Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. We have never been one nation since. We have never come back together one, and to one nation since. And will not come back until the Lord comes. So the Lord told us exactly when we come out of Egypt, and this way, he gave us signs, sisters and brothers, to let us know when we're going to come out of this captivity. But don't nobody pay attention to the signs. Everybody's screaming now, let's go back to 400 years is up. Come on back home. Home to where? Somebody else is in your homeland. And the Israelites they have over there that, that are left from here, don't you know that they are expelling them now? Have anybody paying any attention? So your house is in the hand of somebody else. And before you go home, the Lord have got to come. And the Lord cannot come until the time that the Gentiles be fulfilled. Now let's go into 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter. Because he gave us some signs, sisters and brothers. But we are so hung up on what we're trying to call nationhood until we don't see what the Lord told us. So we won't be prepared to take care to enjoy this goodness when it comes. Because Jesus have a set time to come. It's all that simple. You know, if you read and you see a couple of times they want to stone him, we're going to try to kill him, but he slipped away. And he said, because his time was not yet. It wasn't time for him to be killed. So some kind of way, he must have blinded him and started looking like and just walked right on through him yeah. because it wasn't the time. And he had power. The reason I know, because when they come out in that mouth and they get him, and they say, he said, who are you looking for? He said, well, we're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I'm he. They went back and fell to the ground. He just let them know, I'm letting you take me, mister. 
Don't think for a minute that you can do something that I'm not allowing you to do. You allowed them to do it. So you have sign, and he gave us this sign, and we're going to pay attention to it. Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, and start reading at verse 1. Okay, go ahead. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now we beseech you by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead and read. And by our gathering together unto him. That's because that's when we're going to be gathered to him when he comes. And not a day before. Go ahead and read. That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, uh -huh. neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that, as that the day of Christ is at hand. He says, I don't want you to be shaken by nothing, by letter or by spirit. You hear something in your ear, Christ is coming tomorrow. Pay don't pay no attention to it. Even if we tell you a letter, so that's so-called people that's supposed to be First in the word of God, if they write you a letter, the time is at hand. What did he say? Don't believe it. Go ahead. Yeah. Let no man deceive you by any means. Uh -huh. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Uh -huh. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. First thing has got to be a falling away from the truth. That has happened, sister and brother. Yeah. The world is steeped in paganism. There have been a major falling away from the truth. And then that man of sin be revealed. They don't have a clue who he is because they think he is the holiest man on the planet. In fact, they call him the Holy See. The vicar, the replacement of Christ. Look what Paul said. Go ahead and read. Four, who opposes and exalteth himself above all that is called God. And he do. God said the seventh day is the day of rest. He said the first day. God said, I'm coming to this earth. He said, no, we're coming to going to uh, heaven. Everything that this man, uh, that we have been taught, this man has taught you under the, manner, under the banner of this Roman Christianity is direct opposite of God, sister and brother. Who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God. Go ahead. Or that is worship. Or that is worship. So go ahead. So that he as God should have been the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So that he is God. Set him in the temple of God, showing himself and showing the world that he is God. He said, now, that the time Christ cannot come until this man is revealed. And he ain't gonna be, and he ain't gonna come or be revealed until it's time. And if you don't know where the temple of God is gonna be, then if somebody go in it and move in it, you don't know who he is, then you don't know what's going on. Right. But go ahead and read. Five. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. Now, he said, remember, I told you these when I was with you. In other words, I'm leaving you the signs that the Lord left with me. Go ahead and read. And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. So there's a time for everything, isn't it? Yeah. So now you know what's going on. And I've told you what you look for, so you will see him when he come in his time. Go ahead. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Go ahead. Only he who now letteth will let uh -huh. until he be taken out of the way. Because this started in the Roman, on the Roman Empire rulership system, brother. There wasn't no Gentile uh, 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 high priest among men. The only high priest was among Israel. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, now you got a high priest among Gentile that actually built on the order of Levi, and people don't understand that. I know more about the Catholic religion Religion than the Catholic know. You know why? Because they stole it from Levi. It's all that simple. But look what it said. Go ahead and read. Eight. And then shall that wicked be revealed. And then shall that be wicked be revealed. Go ahead. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. So when the Lord's going to destroy this guy? That is coming. When he come and when he take down him, it will be the end of the Gentile time. 
It'll be his time, sisters and brothers. Not a day before. That's why I said Jerusalem is going to be trodden underfoot for three and a half years. And at the end of that three and a half years, here come the Lord, and he is going to take him down. Let's go into Romans, the 11th chapter. Because the Lord let you know a lot of things here and don't nobody pay no attention to. Romans chapter 11. Because the Lord have given the Gentiles some time, sisters and brothers. And I don't care how the brother get on the streets and raise hell and talk crazy. He ain't going to shorten it one minute. Because the Lord called this thing. The Lord called it in from the beginning. Everybody are uh, actors in the Lord's theater. And this is what a lot of people don't understand. Even Satan is an actor in the Lord's theater. Nothing is out of hand. Verse 1, 11 and 1. Go ahead and read. I say then, have God cast away his people? God forbid. Uh -huh. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. See, this started back in the Paul's day. You know, the Lord didn't cast away the Jews or the Israelites, you know. But, uh, and they say in the day, you know. But they, no, the Lord haven't cast away Israel. Look what Paul told these people. Go ahead and read. God have not cast away his people which he foreknew. Go ahead. Would ye not what the scripture saith of Elias? how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Go ahead. Lord, they have, dig, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. He said, look, God have not cast away his people, which he knew before any other nation. In fact, the Lord told Israel, you only have I known out of all the nations on the earth. But he said, Paul has not cast away his people. Who do you think is talking to you, Gentile? A Hebrew Israelite. I'm the one that's teaching y'all. It's even Elijah. Launch a complaint against Israel. The Lord, they done kill your, uh, dug down your altar, altars, and they done kill your prophets, and I'm the only one that's left when they're seeking my life. Have you noticed that all of this stuff against the will of God was done by Israelites? But none of this is done by nobody else, wasn't it? Nope. See, them, see this you have to take mind when you see these brothers out here blaming everybody for our condition. Maybe you ain't paid no attention. Go ahead. Four. But what saith the answer of God unto him? Go ahead. I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who huh? have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Now he said, look, Elijah, I got 7,000 men that have never bowed the knee to the image of Baal mm -hmm. that have their eyes on A lot of people not seeing, but I got 7,000 that have always had their eyes in their head. Skip down to verse 7. Verse 7 and read it. What then? Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for. We have not. Go ahead and read. But the election have obtained it, and so, the rest were blinded. So what is this that we obtain? It's knowledge, sisters and brothers. Yeah. The world don't know what's going on, but they always have an elect few in every generation that got their eyes on, like in Elijah's day. Look, I got 7,000 that ain't never bowed the knee to Baal. Mm -hmm. This generation, the people that read this book and understand it, they got their eyes on. But he said, look, the election, some few that I've elected, they know what's going on, but the rest are blinded. But this is what I always like to say. Skip down to verse 25. Verse 25 and read it. For well, I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, uh -huh. that ye should be wise in your own conceit, that blindness in part has happened to Israel uh until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. This let me know that all Israelites are not going to know that they're Israel yep. until the time of the Gentile has come in. When it's a fullness, that's talking about the amount of time that God has given the Gentiles to run this thing. Mm -hmm. And they're going to run it. Brothers don't like to hear me say it, but it's the way it is. They're going to run it. 
and you ain't going to take nothing from it. Well, you know, Obama was president. First thing is, Obama was a Hamite. And second thing is, he operated under the Constitution of the United States, which the Gentiles set up. And if he had tried to step outside the Constitution, the Gentiles would have taken him down. It's all that simple system, though. Like it was the Gentile that appointed Herod, Herod, King Herod, King of Judea. Because it's their time. And so this thing is going to go on. Like Israel and a, a whole going to be blinded, blind until the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled. Not a day before, but you got some that see in every generation. But they don't like to pay no attention to us because we see it all. We see that God is the God of all people. We even know what we was chosen for. Right. And believe me, that's not general knowledge among Israelites. All they got to do is look out and see how they're always talking about it. Ain't nobody going to be saved but us. But God chose you to bring them to save them, mister. If you, gonna, if you don't deliver the people that you are chosen to deliver, in fact, you're trying to throw them away, what do you think God is going to do to you? Let's go on to Luke, the 19th chapter. So the Lord will let you know. So I'm on, uh, you're going to be taken down. Israel was already in captivity, but the Lord is going to let you know that he is going to finally finish it all. See, what he told in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, it happened in increments. Israel got a little reprieve, but Israel still wasn't in charge because when Cyrus let them go, Cyrus let them go. But they were still under the tutorage of the Gentile, under the leadership of the Gentile. They couldn't go no further. And when they rebelled, under the Roman Empire, then they showed them, still, us Gentiles are in charge. 19 and verse 41. And nine, uh, cause when Jesus was walking up on Jerusalem, he knew what was going to happen to him. And it affected him. Luke 19, and we're going to start reading at verse 41. Okay, go ahead. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, uh -huh. saying, If thou hast known, even thou at least in this thy day, Go ahead. the things which belong unto thy peace, uh -huh. but now they are hidden from thine eyes. He said, only if you had known the things that you could have, like if Israel had done what we supposed to, he said, you would have had peace. He said, but now it's hid from your eyes. Go ahead and read. For well, the day shall come upon thee, that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee uh -huh. and compass thee round and keep thee in on every side. Go ahead. And shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee. And they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. You so the time going to come when your enemy going to catch a trench around you. And they're going to keep you in on every side and they're going to lay you even with the ground. Sisters and brothers, this happened in 70 A.D. Let's look at this. Let's go into the uh, history book Atlas, page 201 and 202. Atlas, page 201 and 202. If you have it back there, put it on the board. Okay, read it. In 68, the Roman commander launched a methodical campaign to isolate Jerusalem. The district of Perea east of the Jordan was conquered. Mm -hmm. In the West Emmas was taken and a legion garnished there. Entering the Jordan Valley from the north through Croy, Roman columns took Jericho. Go ahead. Where second garrison was stationed. Meanwhile, in Jerusalem, various Jewish factions began fighting among themselves for control of the rebellion. The overthrow and suicide of Emperor Nero brought operations in Judea to a temporary halt as Vespasian prudently withdrew to test the imperial wind. Uh-huh. Well, I want to say to people back there, if you got this, put it on the board now. Don't take it down. Go ahead. Eventually, he himself was declared emperor, 
Sailing for Rome in the spring of 70, he left his capable son Titus in charge of the campaign against Jerusalem. So Vespasian, he became emperor eventually, but while he was going to see if he could be emperor, he left his son Titus in charge of the assault on Jerusalem. Go ahead. The walls enclosing the temple and the upper and lower cities were the most formidable barrier of all. Uh -huh. Postponing an all-out assault, Titus turned to starvation tactics. Go ahead. A certain amount of food had been smuggled into the city almost nightly during the siege. But now the Romans sealed off Jerusalem completely with the wall of their own, uh -huh. made of earth and some five miles in circumference. Didn't Jesus say he's going to cast the trench around you and yeah. keep you in on every side? Yeah. The Romans did that. Go ahead. From the outset of the siege, those attempting to get through the encircling lines had been caught and crucified. Uh huh. Sometimes the daily executions reached 500. Now, people only know about Jesus and the two thieves that was crucified. Just to let you know, in 70 AD, Titus was crucifying 500 Israelites a day. Mm. Some was trying to sneak out of the city, and some trying to sneak food in the city because they had them surrounded. The trench was around them, like Jesus said. So now, and they had these levers. You couldn't creep in there. They'd catch you and crucify you. Up to 500 a day. This is recorded history. Go ahead. The crosses were never bare. Inside the city, starvation and disease claimed a mounting toll. Uh-huh. Bodies filled the streets and were stacked in houses. Go ahead. Thousands of corpses were thrown from the walls into the valleys below. Uh-huh. The surviving rebels made a last-ditch stand within Herod's palace. The battering rams resumed their rhythmic work. When the legionnaires at last broke into this refuge, they found only corpses. Herod's palace and the rest of the upper city were put to the torch. Jerusalem was a city of the dead. Now that's in 70 AD. 70 AD. They took down Jerusalem and then leave a stone upon another. When they said Herod palaces, then look, the uh, Edomites had pulled up out of the middle of them now. You understand? They left it to Israel because they had rebelled. So they killed 500 people a day on the cross. But before that happened, Jesus warned them. See, the Lord always give you a warning. Yep. When trouble comes, he's going to tell you, look here, trouble is coming. It's time for you to move. So let's look at this warning. Let's go into Luke, the 21st chapter. Luke chapter 21. See, the Lord always warned you. And we're going to start at verse 20. Luke 21 and verse 20. Luke 21 and verse 20. Okay, go ahead. When ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is not. So, he, so what armies? The armies of the Roman system, brother. Because the Roman had a system. They would conquer people, and then they would incorporate their armies into the Romans' army. So he said, now when you see Jerusalem surrounded, by armies, that's the Roman armies, know that the destruction is near. Go ahead and read. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. So now you, you had a chance to get out of Judea. Go ahead and read. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And you that's not, it, say, get on out of there. I'm going to give you time to move. Go ahead. And let not them that are in the countries enter therein too. And if you somewhere else and out in the other countries or in the hills, don't come down to Jerusalem because the Lord is going to do it. So he said, when you see the army surrounded, get out, flee. Go ahead and read. For these be the days of vengeance, uh -huh. that all things which are written may be fulfilled. And there's all things which are written. Let's talk about the rest of what's going to happen in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. The prophecy is long. He said, but this time of time, all things that are written are going to be fulfilled. That's what let me know that God has written about everything and there's a time for it to take place. Yeah. Go ahead and read. But woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. Go ahead. For there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. 
That's some of Israel. Go ahead and read. Judah, and shall, go ahead. Go ahead. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Uh-huh. And shall be led away captive into all nations. Uh-huh. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So they're going to be led captive, the one that they didn't kill? They didn't kill everybody. The one that they didn't kill? So they're going to be led captive into all nations. And then Jerusalem going to be trodden down by the Gentiles until the time for the Gentiles is fulfilled, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. But people don't understand. It was the legal nation that gave those people that are called Jews, the Gentiles gave them that land. And they sustained them with weapons. Still, who's running it? The Gentiles. But how long are they going to be scattered? Israel going to be scattered? Until the Gentile and Temptiles have been fulfilled. Not a day before. Now let's go look at it, the scattering. Let's go into the last two million years, page 87. Because Titus destroyed it, and all the ones that they didn't kill, they scattered. At that time, it was all over the Mediterranean, which is Europe and Africa. Go ahead and read. Faith survives the dispersion, page 87. The crucifixion of Jesus about A.D. 30 did not end the Jewish resistance to the Roman occupation. In 70, when the country was again in a state of revolt, Jerusalem, the holy city, became the core of the resistance to the Romans. Uh -huh. Titus, the son of Emperor Vespasian, proceeded to lay siege to Jerusalem. The city fell, and the inhabitants were enslaved in their thousands and dispersed throughout the Mediterranean world. And there was the last of Judah, the last gathering of any Israelites in the land. There, it was terminated in 70 A.D. Yep. Now, you get people in that land that call themselves us, they don't have nothing to do with us. They don't have nothing that identifies them with us. Let's go in the 74th chapter of Psalm. But remember now, he said they're going to be scattered until the Gentiles be fulfilled. I mean the time that the Lord then gave the Gentiles. Other people, places say until the, until the Gentiles be come in. That means that they're, uh, they're a quota of Gentiles. No, that don't mean that they're going to be a quota of Gentiles. That's some of the time that God gave them. It's going to be up. And when that time is up, that time is going to be up. But it's not going to be by the hand of us. Because the people that's captive do not run nothing. They're like the Egyptians say, uh, 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 they didn't become more and mighty than us. Let's put them in slavery. We couldn't stop them. And this we got to understand, sisters and brothers, that the Lord is calling this thing. Psalm 74 and let's look, look what the, uh, Israel is saying. Go ahead and read. O oh God, why hast thou cast us off forever? Uh huh. Why doth thine anger smoke against the sheep of thy pasture? Now, this is the Lord is talking to, because this thing between us and the God of Israel. Go ahead and read. Remember thy congregation, which thou hast purchased of old, uh -huh. the rod of thine inheritance, which thou hast redeemed. This Mount Zion. When thou hast dwelt. He said, remember us, the one that you purchased from Egypt, and the one that uh, you redeemed out of the hand of Egypt. He said, look, it brought us to Zion. Go ahead and read. Lift up thy feet unto the perpetual desolation. Go ahead. Even all that the enemy have done wickedly in the sanctuary. Go ahead. Thine enemies roar in the midst of thy congregation. They set up their ensigns for signs. So look, and they roll and they set up their ensigns for signs. Skip down to verse 7. Go ahead. They have cast fire into thy sanctuary. Uh -huh. They have defiled by casting down the dwelling place of thy name to the ground. Go ahead. They said in thy hearts, let us destroy them together. They have burned up all the synagogues of God in the land. So whatever we had, they burned it all up. Go ahead and read. We see not our sign. Uh -huh. There is no more any prophet, neither is there among us any that knoweth how long. So now, so we don't see any of our sign. 
We don't even have among our prophets people that know how long. Jesus gave us a sign, but we don't even teach that. Look what they teach every Sunday. Then look at the Hebrew Israelites in the street. They don't know how long. And then say, and these strangers have set up their sign. We don't see any. You know, when Israel was a nation, when the temple was built, around the wall, you had cherub angels, palm tree, cherub angels, palm tree, cherub angels, palm tree. Then when Israel went to war, they took the ark of the covenant with them. And that ark was set up in the, in the, in the uh, 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 temple under the mercy seat. And on each side of the mercy seat, you had cherub angels. We don't see any of that stuff no more. What do we see? The star of David. That is not our sign. That is the sign of Mo, Mo, what's that, uh, Rim Frim and Moa, uh, Molak. Rim Frim and Molak. That is not our sign. But look what they got there? They got the star of David. What's your sign? You get all of them smart Hebrew Israelites there with all that vitriol and puffiness, all of them got the star of David all over there. That is not our sign. So you got all that, that's when the Lord said, we don't see none of our signs. We don't see nothing belong to us. So when I see a brother running around with a star David on, that let me know that he is uninformed. That is not our sign. That's a sign of paganism. But Edom got it and made it his sign. Whatever Edom have, he had. And the brother walk around with a head cover, got to have my head cover. That come from the Gentiles. Have you ever noticed what the Pope wear and all the cardinals wear? And you trying to make that us. We are so uninformed, sisters and brothers, until we don't have a clue what's going on and we see all the evidence that, hey, this didn't come from us. Let's go into Hosea, the third chapter. And the Lord is going to make it clear that we ain't going to have nothing that we can show for. Hosea, chapter 3. That's why I look. I just look, guy walking in with Star David on his, you know, I'm Hebrew, he's really like, here's my sign, the Star of David. It's just like I asked this attorney. That, uh, that I really liked. He used to like the Israeli God, you understand? But he always wanted to have lunch with me. Let's go and have some lunch, because they wanted to talk the book. Yeah, don't you know that we have common signs and common diseases? I said, yeah, I know that. Because sickle cell anemia, us and the Edomites. Y'all didn't know that? See? I knew that. But finally, I got tired of him pushing me, let's go eat. I said, okay, I'm going to go eat. Went down to the restaurant, Manny's restaurant down there on Roosevelt Road. And he right away, he wanted to start getting to the book. I said, look here, man, let me ask you a question. What's that? Y'all studied the Torah. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm going to show you how big this guy was. You know what he told me? He said, any lawyer or judge in Illinois with any salt was either his student or his classmate. That's how big he was, and he wasn't lying. But I asked him a non-educated, non-lawful statement. Do you study the uh, Torah? Yeah. But well, ask me this, man. Why is it that you call the star of David? And David was not even in the Torah. He didn't know that. But he shut up. Conversation over with. Haven't been offered to lunch no more. Hosea 3, and let's start at verse 4. Hosea 3 and 4. Oh, Hosea chapter 3 and verse 4. Okay, go ahead. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king and without a prince and without a sacrifice, and without an image, and without an ephod, 
and without teraphim. The teraphim is a cherubim. You understand? We're going to uh, dwell many days without all this. We got brothers running down there call them prince of Israel. You ain't got no country, so you ain't going to print prince. Running around telling me, I'm the priest. Hey, he said, you going, where's the priest? Without an image. We don't have our cherubims and our palm trees. We don't have the Ark of the Covenant. Go ahead and read. Afterward, shall the children of Israel return uh -huh. and seek the Lord their God. Now pay attention to this. Afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God. Go ahead. And David their king. And David their king. Look, why are you going to seek a dead man? It's because that's going to be after the resurrection when Israel is turned. All right. Not a day before. Go ahead and finish that. And shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. Now, and that's when we are going to be returned. And when we return, we're going to be looking for David. You got these flesh and blood brothers. I'm going to be doing this flesh and blood. You ain't going to be running nothing. I got scripture for that. You done, your time is up for running stuff. When the Hamites tried to run it, they dropped the ball. Yep. Then our forefathers, David, Solomon, all the king, they dropped the ball. And now the Gentiles didn't drop the ball. So when the Lord come, he said, I done gave you flesh and blood types an opportunity to govern yourself, and you could not. So now I'm going to run it. And I mean, he said, he's going to rule this earth with a rod eye. Somebody better pay attention, sisters and brother. Now let's go and look. Now, but it started with Judah, started with the Gentiles. Let's go and go back. Let's go into Daniel, the second chapter. And he's letting you know when the time is up for this Gentile, sisters and brothers. Because this is with the Lord. It ain't got nothing to do with us. That's why I don't have no beef with no people. Because I know who called this thing. And I know why we are where we are, because I know God put it on the table and offered to make us ruler over everything, and we dropped the ball. And I look at some of the spirit that people have now, God ain't going to put nobody under nobody that evil. So you might have some servant, but they're going to have a job, less like anybody else, and then you're going to have to give them a part of the land. But don't nobody talks about that, sisters and brothers. Daniel chapter 2, and let's start at verse 1. This is when Daniel's had this dream here. And this dream is, is the beginning of the Gentile rulership, and it's going to take us clean down to the end of the Gentile rulership. See, the Lord always tells you the beginning and the end. All you got to do is pay attention to what he have written because he don't like his servant being blind, screaming and hollering, and being an embarrassment to him. That's why I tell you to seek the peace of the land, because that is your peace. Mm -hmm. Obey the laws of the land for the Lord's sake. So when you be disobedient and you're acting unseemly, you're embarrassing your people and your God. Daniel's 2 and 1. Go ahead and read. And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, wherewith his spirit was troubled and his sleep break from him. Uh -huh. Then the king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans for to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. Tonight, Nebuchadnezzar had this dream, and he called his people, always the people among the Gentiles, to tell him, and let's see if they can handle it. Go ahead and read. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Go ahead. Then spake the Chaldeans to the king in Syriac, O king, live forever. Uh-huh. Tell thy servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. So he done forgot his dream. So how are they going to interpret a dream that he done forgot? But Nebuchadnezzar, they had had Nebuchadnezzar thinking they're so wise they can do anything. Go ahead and read. Five. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me. 
If ye will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof, go ahead. Ye shall be cut in pieces, uh -huh. and your houses shall be made a dunghill. In other words, I'm gonna kill all of you, and the house is gonna be the place where they leave waste at. Oh, you done hustled me all this time and been on my payroll, living off the government in the name of God, and you can't answer me when I need you. So. He gave a commandment, I'm going to kill you. Skip down to verse 10. Verse 10 and read it. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Uh -huh. Therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler that acts such things at any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. Now, that was very presumptuous of us, wasn't it? Very. There's not a man on earth can do it. God always got somebody on earth that can point out what he wants you to know in every generation. So now the king got mad and he was going to kill them all. Skip down to verse 12. Verse 12 and go ahead. For this cause the king was angry and very furious uh -huh. and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. He wanted to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. But what happened? Go ahead and read. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain and they saw Daniel and his fellows to be slain. See, they didn't go to Daniel to ask them if they knew the interpretation. They went to them to kill them because they just know, can't no captive know what's going on. You are captive. You are slaves. We don't think nothing of you. How are you going to have this kind of wisdom? So they went and got Daniel's them to do it. But Daniel told, told the man, look, why are you so hasty? What's going on? And he told him, so look, give me a little time. So look, take me in before the king. Skip down to verse 16. Verse 16 and go ahead. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. He didn't say give me a little time and I might come up with the answer. No. Give me time and I will show you your dream and your interpretation. Because he's a man of God, and he know that his God ain't going to let him down, so he, he was street, uh, speaking from a position of strength. And he went and told his God. And the Lord gave it to him. Skip down to verse 26. Verse 26, and go ahead. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, uh -huh. Art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof? Go ahead. Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king have demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers show unto the king? He said, look, what you're looking for, king, these guys can't show you. He didn't ask him a question. He made a statement. Can you show me my dream and what I dream? He said, I want to tell you something. All these people you got around you that's supposed to be religious leaders and politicians, they can't show you this. Only one can show you this. Go ahead and read. 28. But there is a God in heaven that revealed of secrets and make it known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. Now, he said, look, but there's a God of heaven that's big known to you what's going to happen in the future. Your vision and your dream. He said, and these are, this is what you dream. Go ahead and read. As for thee, O king, thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed. What should come to pass hereafter? And he that revealeth secrets maketh known to thee what shall come to pass? Go ahead. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for, for any wisdom that I have more than any living. But for their sakes, they shall make known the interpretation to the king and that thou mightest know the thoughts of the heart. He said, look, this is not for me to look wise. It's for me to let you know what's going to happen in the future. Go ahead and read. Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, a great image. Uh -huh. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, go ahead. stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. He's a great image, but go ahead and read. This image's head was of fine gold, 
his breast and his arms of silver, uh -huh. his belly and his thighs of brass. Go ahead. His legs of iron. You his... notice, you notice this image is one. Mm -hmm. It's not a whole lot of parts. It's just different uh, uh, flavors. In other words, different uh, strengths of oil that he was used to define this image because these are talking about nations. Go ahead and read. 33. His legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Go ahead. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, uh -huh. which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them to pieces. Now you saw that a stone that was cut out without hand smote this image and broke him into pieces. What did, he, what did he smite him at? On the feet. On the feet. Go ahead and read. 35. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together. Go ahead. And became like the chaff of the summer threshing floor. Uh -huh. And the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Now this stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This image was smitten on the feet. Look like he wanted to take some out. You hit him in the head, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. But this image, sisters and brothers, represented the Gentile rulership from Nebuchadnezzar down to the European Union over there. But go ahead and read. 36. This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation there before the king. Thou, O king, art a king of kings. Uh -huh. For the God of heaven has shown thee a kingdom, power, and strength and glory. Now, he done set you over everything. You're a king of kings. He started this rulership. The only, the first one that ever ruled the world. Mm -hmm. He said, he didn't put you over all of it. What verse? 38. Go ahead. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven have he given into thine hand. Go ahead. And have made thee ruler over them all. Uh -huh. Thou art this head of gold. Go ahead. And after thee, shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. Go ahead. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces, and subdueth all things. And as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. So now, that's the fourth kingdom. That's the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. Worse than every empire before it, because it not only destroyed you physically, it destroyed you spiritually with a false religion. Yep. Go ahead and read. 41. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of part is clay and part of iron, uh -huh. the king shall be, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. That means it's gonna be strong nations and weak nations in it. Mm -hmm. But still is a part of the stature. Go ahead and read. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Uh-huh. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another even as iron is not mixed with clay. Even though they're going to be a unit, they're not going to give up their national name, sister and brother even though they're going to mingle together. Go ahead and read. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Now this is what I'm looking at, sisters and brothers. In the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom and shall never be destroyed. Go ahead and read. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, uh -huh. but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. Now, Remember, the stone hit this image on the feet. Put me the stones up, brother, the, the image, and show it here. So the stone hit the image on the feet, and he said, and that stone grew and filled the entire earth, sisters and brother. That stone represent Jesus. That's why I said, in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. So why did he hit the ten toes? This is because that's all the land. You had Nebuchadnezzar, Medo-Persia, the Greeks, and the Romans, and now the, tent, the Romans trying to raise themselves up again. 
And they wrote, and, and, and this time when they make it, they're going to come as ten nations that's going to rule the area that they're in. Now let's look at these ten nations. One of them to change, but still we're going to put them up there anyway. Let's, uh, let's, let's go and, uh, 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 and I give you a copy of that. The ten nations. Let's see, we get, put them on the board here because I should have give, given you something on it. So we can read it. Can you put them up? Let's name them. Okay. Now, uh, turn around and read them, Cornell. <laughs> Give them the image first. What's the, what's the title say? Maybe I better read them. Your eyes worse than mine. Okay, I'm going to read them. Decision of the council of the Western European Union on the residual rights and obligation of the WEU. Look at now, look at it. Considering Belgium, France, Germany, Greece, Italy, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Portugal, Spain, and the United Kingdom. Well, they're out now, but somebody's going to take their place. Agreed that they shall sail, that they shall under the international law be jointly liable for the fulfillment of the residential administration obligation of the WEU and, the, and, uh, and that to this extent they will assume joint, jointly the rights and obligation of the WEU. Now look what they call them now. What do they call them? Ten. The 10. Why not the 11 or the 9? The 10, sisters and brothers, go ahead. They will be jointly responsible, including financially. I'm just going to go to it. The WEU, Resident Administrative Obligation, specified in paragraph 1 of this decision, particularly in the WGU, Article 40, of the WEU pension rule. Well, that, so that's the Western Union. That's all of it, right? We ain't got no more? But how many of them is it, sisters and brothers? Ten. And what they call them? The ten. Why ten? Because how many toes does a feet have? Both of them together. And that stone hit the ten toes well on the feet of it, and it grew and fill the entire earth. It didn't bounce back to heaven. So when Jesus come and take down the nation, Russia going to be in it too, but the W, but he's giving you that as a sign. He said, in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. We looking at them kings, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. When I say, there are people, like, don't you know, boys, uh, time's almost over with. They just talking. But I can say at times is almost over with because I know prophecy. And if the Lord said in the days of these kings, read that again, brother. I want you to read that one more time. And then the, this is Daniel 2 and 44. Uh -huh. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom uh -huh. which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Now, aren't we looking at these kings over there? Yeah. So that means that we are, under, we are in the days of these kings. Right. And that prophecy, the Lord said in the days of these kings, they had Daniel tell him that the God of heaven is going to set up a kingdom, that's that stone. Then it's going to happen in our generation. We're going to show you this. Let's go on to Revelation 17 chapter. Revelation chapter 17. Now we got people ain't, ain't mentioning. I'm looking at these brothers in the street. They ain't saying nothing to the people about the European Union. You go to church on Sunday, ain't nobody saying nothing about the European Union. And this is a major sign. This is the end time sign. If you don't know about this, then you are blind as a bat. And you're going to Run around and trying to be the eyes of somebody, you can't even see yourself. I'm gonna show you about these things. First thing, this is this is they come with the religion. 
that the Lord called a whore that sits on many waters. 17 and 1. Go ahead and read. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vows and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. That's the, that's the great false religion that rules over many people. That's what it's saying. Go ahead and read. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of a fornication. But kings, when they go to Italy, don't go over there and kiss the Pope's ring. And what is the wine of a fornication? Bad doctrine. Everybody that called himself a Christian. Christian. Bad doctrine. The original Christian, nobody know about. Go ahead and read. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet color beast, uh -huh. full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Now I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, full of name and blasphemy. This beast had seven heads and ten horns. What are these seven? Finish that verse. No, seven heads and ten horns. Now, I'm going to tell you, where the seven heads come from? We can't do, but we got a lesson to show you this. First head was Nebuchadnezzar. Second head was the Medo-Persian. And then the Greeks had four heads. And then here come the, uh, 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 had four heads, rather. And then here come the Romans with one head. So those seven heads represent from the Roman, from the Babylonian Empire down to the Roman Empire. But it's going to come again in the form of ten horns. And let's see how long these horns are going to be around. Skip down to verse 12. Verse 12 and go ahead. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings. We just named them all, sister and brother, except for one. I don't know who the one that's replaced England is, but it's the same ten. Ten, we're looking at them. Go ahead and read. Which have received no kingdom as yet. They hadn't received a kingdom in the days of John, but they have it now. Go ahead and read. But received power as kings one hour with the beast. That's three and a half years. Go ahead. These have one mind. They have one mind. And shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Uh-huh. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and king of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Now, if they're going to make war with the Lamb, that means that's when the Lord is coming, ain't it? Yeah. These ten going to make war with the Lamb. Daniel's second chapter said that that stone smote the image on the feet and grew and filled the entire earth. And he said, in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. So now, that lets you know these same ten is going to make war with the Lamb, which is Jesus. And the, and the Lord going to overcome him, and they're going to have some people with him that are faithful and chosen. These are the people that's going to be in the first resurrection, sisters and brothers. Oh, yeah. So we're looking at this. Now let's go to Isaiah, the 34th chapter. Isaiah, chapter 34. These ten are going to make war with the Lamb, and we're looking at them. So now, this telling me that Daniel knew what he was talking about when he said, in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a king. We're looking at it, sister and brother. And in the meantime, Israel is still in captivity. Isaiah 34. Isaiah 34. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. Isaiah 34 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. Come near ye nations to hear, and hearken ye people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. Now he wants everybody on this planet to hear what he got to say, because everybody's going to be affected by it. Go ahead and read. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, uh -huh. and his fury upon all their armies. Go ahead. He have utterly destroyed them. He have delivered them to the slaughter. Now, he said, the indignation of the Lord is against all nations. In other words, he is mad, and he's going to get indignant to the whole planet. He said, the whole army is destroyed and cut off and delivered to the slaughter. That's when he calmed, though. Go ahead and read. Read. 
Their slain also shall be cast out. Go ahead. And their stinks shall come up out of their carcasses. Go ahead. And the mountains shall be melted with their blood. That means he's going to kill a lot of them, ain't it? Yep. Go ahead and read. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. Uh-huh. And all their hosts shall fall down as a leaf falleth off from the vine, and as a falling fig from the fig tree. He's all I'm going to do it. But I got a little present for Adumia. Go ahead. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Adumia uh -huh. and upon the people of my curse to judgment. Have you ever heard anybody talk about who Adumia is? Or no. uh, Esau or uh, Edom? No. Nope. Think about it. They're going to be around because the Lord got a special thing for them. And let me show you when he's when he going to bring the sword on them. Reach down, skip down to verse 8 and read it. Go ahead. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance. For it's the day of the Lord's vengeance. And the year of recompense. And the year of recompense. Go ahead. For the controversy of Zion. To find out who Zion belongs to. That's Jerusalem. That's when the Lord is going to deal with it, sister and brother. And he's going to deal with the people that's occupying it. And then let's see what time this is. Is this talking about something in the past? This is all future. Let's go into Revelation, the sixth chapter. Revelation chapter six. Because this information is what we are seeking, sisters and brothers. This information is what you need. Because without the proper information, you can get caught up in all this. You can find yourself serving the wrong God. And you find yourself on the wrong end of punishment. You need to know so you can protect yourself. Knowledge protects, sisters and brothers. Revelation 6 and verse 12. Go ahead. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. And lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Go ahead. And the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even uh, as a fig tree, uh -huh. pass of her untimely figs. Go ahead. When she is shaken of a mighty wind. Uh huh. And the heaven departed as a scroll, when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Now, that ain't going to happen. How many times is heaven going to be rolled back, back like a scroll? One time. One time. So Isaiah, is Isaiah 34 is talking about this time. Go ahead and read. And the kings of the earth, uh -huh. and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bond man, and every free man, Go ahead. hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, uh -huh. and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. That let you know then... <coughs> Everybody going to see them. Everybody. And then they're going to realize, boy, Jesus really exists. And, and something ugly is to come down on this earth. And they're going to call for the rocks call them, on them to hide them from the wrath of the Lamb. Go ahead. For the great day of his wrath has come. Uh -huh. And who shall be able to stand? Nobody, sister and brother. That's going to happen one time. Let's go into Joel. The third chapter, Joel chapter 3, because he's telling them now, I want you to get ready for war, mister. Who are we talking to? He's talking about the Gentiles. Why the Gentiles? Because it is the times of the Gentiles, sisters and brothers. There is a time for everything, and there's a time to rule, and there's a time to be removed from ruling. And who's going to do it all? God is going to do it, sister and brother. This Hebrew ain't going to do nothing. Mess around and get himself killed before the time. All this you talking about looking at, you be dead. Instead of just being cool and waiting on your God. He done already told you what he's going to do. You don't have to be out threatening people, telling people what you're going to do to them. Every day, every, you know, I know a guy that's always threatening somebody. One day he threatened the wrong man and the man killed him. Why did you kill him? Well, he said he was going to kill me, so I got him first. It is not wise to be passing out threats because sooner or later somebody going to take you serious. And the day that they start taking you serious, that's the day you're going to have some complications. Joel 3 and verse 1. 3 and 1. Go ahead. Well, behold, 
In those days and in that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, uh -huh. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat uh -huh. and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel. Go ahead. Whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Now, this is, now the Lord said he is going to gather all nations when he getting ready to deliver Israel. He is going to plead with them. But what they've done in the valley of Jehoshaphat, that means the valley where Jehovah was judge. And this Jehovah, this is Jesus' old name. It's still Jesus. Go ahead and read. And they have cast lots for my people uh -huh. and have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for wine uh -huh. that they might drink. Now, we know who this happened to us. Nobody else can carry this title, sisters and brothers. I don't have to get out and holler and scream at people. All I got to do is read this book and praise the name of my God. Skip down to verse 6, because he's going to show you what he's saying to the, to the nations. Go ahead and read. Verse 6. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians, uh -huh. that ye might remove them far from their border. Who else on this planet was sold as, host, as a whole nation? Go ahead and read. Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither ye have sold them and will return your recompense upon your own head. So now... If you try to repay me, it ain't, ain't going to happen. I'm going to turn it on your own head because you done built you a debt with me and I'm going to collect. Skip down to verse 9 and go ahead. Pro proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Look what he said now. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Who are the powers nowadays? Gentiles. The Gentiles. So you tell the Gentiles, I want y'all to get ready for war. Go ahead and read. Wake up the mighty men. Uh -huh. Let all the men of war draw near. Go ahead. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares and the swords and your pruning hooks into spears. So I want you to get all your social programs that you take the money from them and buy weapons with them. I want you to prepare for war. Skip down to verse 14 and go, to, go ahead. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. That's how many going to come down because this is going to be war with all the kings of the earth. Multitudes, multitudes, come on down with your army into the valley of decision. That's why it's going to be decided who's going to run this earth. Yep. That's why it's called a valley of decision also. Go ahead and read. For the day of the Lord is near uh -huh. in the valley of decision. Go ahead. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. See, he get a sign of what time it's going to happen. Same time that Isaiah was talking about. Same time that John was talking about. Now, Joel is telling you about the same thing. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their sight, shining. Go ahead and read. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion. That's the heavenly Zion, sisters and brothers. He's going to roar out of Zion. That's why in Revelation... 21st chapter is called New Jerusalem. New Jerusalem. This is the Zion. He's going to roll out of New Jerusalem because right now he's sitting down on the right hand of the Father uh -huh. and waiting for the time. Because mm. the Father told me, sit there till, at my right hand until I make thine enemy thy footstool. Yep. So now he didn't got up off the right hand. He's going, the Lord shall roll out of Zion. Go ahead and read. And utter his voice from Jerusalem. Go ahead. And the heavens and the earth shall, shall shake, but the Lord will be the hope of his people uh -huh. and the strength of the children of Israel. So everybody's going to be trembling, but the Lord is going to be your hope. That's if you got your mind in the right place. Right. So when is this great battle going to take place? Let's go into 19 chapter of Revelation. 19 chapter of Revelation. And we're going to look at it. We're going to start at verse 11. 19 and 11. 19 and 11. Okay, go ahead. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. Now, but two, three, but one time the heaven go open. Yeah. Isaiah told you about it. John told you about it. Now he's telling you again. Go ahead and read. And in righteousness... He doth judge and make war. So he coming to fight. Go ahead. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, 
and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Go ahead. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. That's why they were running for the rocks. Yep. Because they knew that he came to make war. Go ahead and read. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. These are the angels. He coming with all the angels. And he's going to have them a crop of new gods too. But they're coming. And let's see what's going to happen. Skip down to verse 19. And go ahead. Angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the flower, fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. That's why it's vesture was dipped in blood. Go ahead and read. And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Go ahead. And the beast was taken and with them the false prophet Go ahead. that brought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worship his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. So he said, with the beasts and the kings of the earth, that means this is a world wall, sisters and brother. Yeah. This is the real third world wall coming down now. And Jesus is going to be the one that ends it. And when he take down these nations and kill so many that the animals are going to have to eat them, then he's going to take the beast and the false prophet. Who is the beast? The leader of the European Union. And who is the false prophet? Papa which they call Pope. He's going to cast both of them into the lake of fire. They ain't going to die like other people. They're going to change on their way down. Go ahead and read. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth. Uh-huh. And all the fowls were filled with their flesh. So now, once that happens, sisters and brothers, that is the end of the Gentile rulership, sisters and brothers. That is the end. So let's go to the, look at the sign which the Lord gave us that begins the end of the Gentile rulership. We already see one sign. We're looking right there in the days of the East King. They're over there, ain't they? Yep. Now let's go into Matthew, the 24th chapter. And this one you know, it is three and a half years away. Matthew 24. So this is what he wants us to look at is the signs. Ain't nobody paying no attention to the signs. Nobody paying attention to the European Union. The brothers in the streets out of the Hebrews should be telling them, look here, man, I'm going to tell y'all something. That the Lord said in the days of these kings, shall he set up a kingdom, and I'm looking at them kings. That's the ten nations that rule Western Europe, called the e e e European Union. Ain't nobody saying that. And it says in the days of these kings, the Lord's going to set up a kingdom. 24 and 1. Matthew 24 and 1. Go ahead and read it. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Uh -huh. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Go ahead. And as he said upon the Mount of Olives. And that Olives, happened in 7 A.D., sister and brother. One, not, one stone left upon another. Titus destroyed Jerusalem down to the ground. But go ahead. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, what shall these things be? Uh -huh. And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So they wanted to know when, he gonna tell, when the temple going to be torn out, and what's the sign of his coming and the end of the world? That's as we know it now. That's because we know now the world under Gentile rulership. So when is that time going to be? But go ahead and read. And Jesus answered and said unto them, uh -huh. Take heed that no man deceive you. Uh -huh. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So he said, Take heed that no man deceive you. Because many are going to come in my name, saying that I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Where you find them? Behind the pulpit, sister and brother. It's all that simple. 
But he's going to give you the straight up reason. Skip a uh, uh, straight up sign. Skip down to verse 15. Verse 15 and read it. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, uh -huh. stand in the holy place, uh -huh. whoso readeth, let him understand. He said, when you see this, you better understand what's going on. Paul called him the man of sin. When you see this, you better understand why. Skip down to verse 21. Verse 21 and go ahead. For then shall be great tribulation. That's when great tribulation is going to come up on this earth. Go ahead and read. Such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, no ever shall be. Go ahead. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Look, sisters and brothers, when Jesus made this prophecy, there was no weapon that could destroy all flesh. But we everybody got it now, though, don't they? Oh, yeah. Nuclear weapon. He said, but it's, if he don't, he said, if it was, if he don't come and cut it short, there will be no flesh saved. Because they're gonna be in the making of the world war because East and Western Europe is gonna be coming together. And there's going to be a lot of killing. And then everybody's going to start pulling up them big weapons. But then the Lord said, I'm going to cut this short. Because if I don't, there ain't going to be no flesh saved. Now skip down to verse 29. And he's telling, you, and he's telling us when we see this, what time it is. Verse 29, go ahead. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, uh -huh. and the moon shall not give her light. Go ahead. And the stars shall fall from heaven, uh -huh. and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. How many times that's going to happen? One Go ahead. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Go ahead. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Uh -huh. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. No, I said, and they're going to see him coming now. He already has set the sign to let you know, I'm been ready to come now. Now here I come. Go ahead and read. And he shall send his angel with the great sound of a trumpet. Uh -huh. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from the one end of heaven to the other. Now, that's when he's going to gather together his elect, sister and brother. Not a day before. Who is that? That's Israel. Yep. From one end of the earth to another. Is the America's hemisphere the whole earth? No. Then why is it you got people telling you that all the ten tribes are over here? Name Indians, Puerto Ricans, Mexicans. When they get through all ten tribes are in the American hemisphere. They're going to come from all over the world. Moses told you this, sisters and brothers. This, look, uh, uh, Matthews ain't telling you something that Moses didn't tell you. Let's go back to Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter. Deuteronomy, the 30th. That's why I sit down and then listen to these, to these brothers talk. And I just shake my head. Whole lot of zeal, but no knowledge. Deuteronomy 30, and we're going to start reading that verse 1. Deuteronomy 30, and we're going to start reading that verse 1. 30 and 1. Okay, go ahead. And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, uh -huh. which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whither the Lord thy God have driven thee. Now, what blessing and the curse is the one in the 28th chapter that he said going to come upon us? And we have come out of the curse. He said, so it's going to come to pass when all this has come up on you, and you are scattered among the nations where, the Lord, where I, the God, Thy God have driven you. Didn't nobody come and rape the continent. I'm listening to some people on YouTube. Yeah, they come over there and they rape the continent of Africa. You, they didn't rape Africa. First thing is the Hamites sold you. And your uncle helped gather you. And they all sold you to the Gentiles. They didn't rape the continent. If you did, the people that look like you and your cousin, which is Ishmael, they raped your villages and sold you to them. Go ahead and read. Two. 
and shall return unto the Lord thy God, and shall obey his voice according, according to all that I command thee this day, thou uh -huh. and thy children. Go ahead. With all thine heart and with all thy soul. Then what is he going to do? Go ahead. That then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity. He's going to reverse your captivity? And will have compassion upon thee. Uh-huh. And will return and gather thee from and all. Will, and will return and gather you. Return, not send you a Moses, another leader. The Lord thy God will return and gather you. Go ahead and read. From all the nations whither the Lord thy God have scattered thee. All the nations. He's not going to leave one. Go ahead and read. If any of thine be driven out into the outmost parts of heaven. Go ahead. From thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. That's why Jesus said, that he going to gather his, his elect from one end of the earth to the other, didn't he? Yep. Moses says, so if any of you have driven to the outmost part of heaven, which is the earth, sisters and brothers, from there will he gather you. Go ahead and read. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possess. Go ahead. And thou shalt possess it. Uh -huh. And he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy father. That's after he returns, sisters and brothers. Because at his return, he's going to terminate the, root, the times of the Gentiles. Let's go to Isaiah the 27th chapter right quick. Isaiah chapter 27. Because this is the whole thing. You out there hollering and screaming, you ain't doing nothing. Ain't nothing going down except for the way that God have already said it's going to go down. Isaiah 27. And we're going to start at verse 12. Isaiah 27. And we're going to start reading at verse 12, 27 and 12, 27 and 12. Okay, read it. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall beat off from the channel of the river unto the stream of Egypt. Go ahead. And ye shall be gathered one by one, O ye children of Israel. He's letting you know ain't nobody going to be left. Go ahead and read. And it shall come to pass in that day that the great trumpet shall be blown, uh -huh. and they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria and the outcasts in the land of Egypt, uh -huh. and shall worship the Lord in the holy mount at Jerusalem. Now, you're going to come at that time when that great trumpet is blown. What trumpet? The seventh trumpet. That's what the Lord said in 24 chapter Matthew, 24 and 31. He's going to send his angel with the sound of a great trumpet. And they're going to gather the elect from one end of the earth to the other. That's after he have come, sisters and brothers. Let's go back to 2 Thessalonians, the first chapter. 2 Thessalonians, the first chapter. Because let you know this is Jesus that's coming to do this. And all these people that's spitting on him, boy, y'all got a problem. 2 Thessalonians, the first chapter. But I'm going to tell you something. Ig ignorance is costly. It is costly. If you don't know what's going on, you can find yourself in a whole lot of trouble. Start reading at verse 6. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 6. 1 and 6. Okay, read. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. So now why you worry about people that trouble you? Right. God is going to do is going to deal with them. Right. Why are you talking about what I'm going to do to you when I get to I'm going to do this here. You going to kiss me? God, come on, God say it's a righteous thing to him to deal with them that trouble you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. Uh -huh. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. He says, "Say you are troubled, rest with us." Don't be all out there scuffling and trying to get yourself killed or bring drama on you. Because the Lord of heaven gonna be because the Lord gonna be revealed with heaven with his mighty angels. Go ahead and read. In flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he is the one that's gonna come and take vengeance in flames of fire. Let's go to Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66. And we're going to start at verse 15. This is Jesus that's going to come and do this, sisters and brothers. So why is it that you're troubling yourself? I don't even buy, I ain't go, I'm, I'm not going out and hollering at nobody, shake the fence at nobody. Because the God that I serve, 
He's going to take care of that business. Mess around and get in the way while he's busting his head, you get yours busted. What you do is you, you just wait on him. That's all you got to do is wait on him. He done told you what he's going to do. That's right. I can tell you the truth. Sometimes I have emotions the other way. Sometimes I look at some of the destruction that the Lord is going to bring on these other people. I kind of find myself grieving for him. Because I know he's going to do it because he did everything. Because everything he said he was going to do to us, he did it. I mean everything. Even to having us here the way in the prison house. He didn't overlook one little thing. And I know that everything he said must be fulfilled. I knew how that, I knew that when I saw him on the cross before he got ready to die. Because prophecy said they gave him vinegar for his drink. Before he could die, he said, I thirst. Then they gave him vinegar. Then he said, it is finished. And he dropped his head and he died. It was something that small have to be fulfilled, that I know everything that he said he's going to do to the people for what they did to us is going to be fulfilled. Why are you going to get in the way? 66 and verse 15. Go ahead. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind uh -huh. to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. He's coming. Go ahead. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, uh -huh. and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Go ahead. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, Go ahead. eating swine's flesh uh -huh. and the abomination and the mouse, shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. In other words, those people that sanctify themselves and ignore my dietary law, I'm going to get them too. Go ahead and read. For I know their works and their thoughts. It shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. I mean, all nations are going to have to come and see his glory. Go ahead and read. And I will set up a sign among them, and I will send those that escape un of them unto the nations to Tarshish. Pool and Lud, that draw the boat to Tubal and Javan, uh -huh. to the Isles of Fall, that they have not heard my fame, neither have seen my glory, and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. See, a lot of them going to see what's going on. They ain't going to know what's happening because they ain't got no knowledge. Mm -hmm. But then he's going to send, send them pretty sure they're immortals. You understand? And tell them what just went down. And they're going to hear among his glory. And once they find out what's going on, What's going to happen? Go ahead. And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of all nations. Go ahead. Upon horses and in chariots and in litters and upon mules and upon swift beasts. Uh -huh. To my holy mountain Jerusalem, saith the Lord, as the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel into the house of the Lord. Look, when he sent people and tell his other nations <laughs> that the God of Israel, the God of Hebrew Israelites is back, and that's Jesus. And they, then they're going to know what went down. There's a whole lot of carnage and, and damage that went down. Then they're going to grab you. Come on. Why are they going to take you back? Because they're going to be looking for a blessing. Oh, I ain't no, I ain't no Hebrew Israelite. I ain't no, that's all right. That's all right. Come with me. Because they're going to be looking. And when they get back, they're going to say, I want you to look at something else. You remember them guys that he threw in the lake of fire? Yep. The Lord going to show you these. Skip down to verse 23. Verse 23 and go ahead. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall go. all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. Go ahead. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. Go ahead. For their worms shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. See, when the lake of fire brought into existence, you don't have to be thinking it's down in the ground. You can't see it. All you're going to have to do is go to Jerusalem, and he's going to say, go over here and look in this fire. Mm. Then Abraham tell the rich man that there's a gulf between you and I. You can't come to us, and we can't come to you, but it's obvious they could communicate, wouldn't it? going to be the same thing. That's when the lake of fire is going to be brought in existence when the Lord comes. 
That's when Israel is going to be returned, when the Lord comes. Let's go into Isaiah the 11 chapter. Isaiah chapter 11. And we're going to start reading that verse 1. Isaiah 11, 11 and 1. Okay, go ahead. Huh? Isaiah what? No, I said Isaiah 11. And we're going to start at verse 1. Somebody gave you the wrong note. I tell you something. Elijah took the wrong note. I had him in the room back there. Well, just follow me right now, okay? Yep. Isaiah chapter 11. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. Okay? Go ahead. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, uh -huh. and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Go ahead. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. Go ahead. The spirit of counsel and might. Uh -huh. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Now this stem of Jesse, that's Jesus. Because he's a, the, the uh, offspring and the root of David, which is the son of Jesse. Skip down to verse 5 and go ahead. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, uh -huh. and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. Go ahead. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, uh -huh. and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. Go ahead. And the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. So these carnivorous, carnivorous beasts are not going to eat it, attack one another. Neither are they going to attack children. Go ahead and read. And the cow and the bear shall feed. Their young ones shall lie down together. Go ahead. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. Uh-huh. That means lion ain't going to be no meat eater no more. He's going to be a, a, a vegetarian too. Go ahead and read. And the sucking child shall play on the hole of the ass. Uh-huh. And the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. So they're going to play with poisonous snakes and they ain't going to get... Bit. Go ahead and read. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. Go ahead. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Go ahead. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. Uh -huh. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and the rest shall be glorious. That root of David, that's still talking about Jesus. At that time it's going to come, sisters and brothers. What verse are we? We're at 11. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, uh -huh. which shall be left from Assyria. Listen now. That's when he's going to set his hand as hell second time. That's going to be way after 48, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Which shall be left from Assyria, a black nation. Black nation. Go ahead and read. And from Egypt. And from Egypt, a black nation. And from Pathros. Black nation. And from Cush. Black nation. And from Elam. Black nation. And from Sinar. Black nation. And from Hamath. I, I don't know which one that is, but go ahead and read. And from the islands of the sea. And from the isles of the sea. Why is it that Israel is in all these black nations and finally got around to us in the isles of the sea? Because that's where the Lord had us scattered, sisters and brothers. But think about what you just read now. You got people over here reading that the ten tribes of Israel teaching are all in America or in the Americas. And they gave a name to all of them, like I said, including American Indian and Mexicans and the Puerto Rican. But then who are all these people here today gathered if the ten tribes are all here? Right. I ain't seen no city called Elam, Shina. Right. Because he is going to gather, that's the second time he's going to gather all of us. So that verse 12? Skip down to 15 and go ahead. And the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea. Go ahead. And with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river and shall smite it in the seven streams and make men go over dry shod. Now, when, have you seen any river dried up here lately? No. I haven't. What's the next verse? And there shall be an highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, 
like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. So sisters and brothers, it's going to be the same thing. All you got to know. But all this is going to take place at the time when the Lord in the rulership of the Gentiles. When their time is up. Isaiah 18 chapter, and we got a couple, two more places after this. Isaiah 18 that y'all talking about. Now we start at verse 3. Y'all to stop trusting Elijah. Isaiah 18 and 3. Okay, go ahead. All ye inhabitants of the world and dwellers on the earth, see ye, when he lifted up an ensign on the mountains and when he bloweth a trumpet, hear ye. Yes, you're going to hear whether you want or not. Go ahead and read. But so the Lord said unto me, uh -huh. I will take my rest, and I will consider in my dwelling place like a clear heat upon earth and like a cloud of dew in the heat of harvest. He said, I'm going to take my rest. He's doing it right now, sitting at the right hand of the Father. And then when he get ready, to, when he stop resting, what's going to happen to that? Go ahead. For for the harvest, when the bud is perfect and the sour grape is ripening in the flower. Go ahead. He shall both cut off the sprigs with pruning hooks and take away and cut down the branches. He ain't talking about vegetation, sisters and brothers. He's talking about the world, people. Go ahead. Yep. They shall be left together unto the fowls of the mountains and to the beasts of the earth. Uh -huh. And the fowl shall summer upon them, and all the beasts of the earth shall winter upon them. That's because there's going to be so many dead bodies, sisters and brother. Yeah. Go ahead and read. In that time shall the present be brought unto the Lord of hosts of a people scattered and peeled. And from a people terrible from their beginning hitherto, uh -huh. a nation meted out and trodden underfoot, whose land the rivers have spoiled, to the place of the name of the Lord of hosts, the Mount Zion. Now, how many people you seen killed all over the world now before the Lord set his hand the second time to recover us? Then he said, and the nation is going to bring you there. That's why he said in Isaiah, he's going to send a uh, uh, send some people to reveal what has just went down on this earth. And they're going to find you, Israel, no matter where you are or what you believe. And they're going to take you back to Israel, whether you want or not. Now let's go into Zephaniah, the third chapter. Zephaniah, chapter 3. There's one more place after this. Zephaniah, chapter 3. Because the Lord has laid this whole thing out, sisters and brothers, and all these people talking about, let's go back home now. now look, what are you talking about? You ain't got no home. Somebody else got your house. Yep. And the other houses that you're talking about going to, they ain't your house. Nigeria proved that to the Ibu in the Biafran Wall. Hutu proved that to the Tutsis. Ethiopian proved that to the Falashas. So where's your house? You end up in the wrong place at the wrong time, and you're going to be reaping the wrong proceeds. Zephaniah 3 and, and 8. Go ahead and read. Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, uh -huh. until the day that I rise up to the prey. Wait on me until the day that I rise up to the prey. Go ahead and read. For my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms, to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger. He says, all my, it is my determination to gather all the nations, so I can pour on them my indignation. Go ahead and read. Even all my fierce anger, uh -huh. for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. When he come, he's taking down this whole planet, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. For then will I turn to the people of pure language, uh -huh. that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. He said, then I'm going to turn the nations of pure language. He's going to take us back to the old days before the tower of uh, 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 before the Tower of Babel, sisters and brothers, and he's going to give us all the same language. Go ahead and read. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, even the daughter of my dispersed, shall bring my offering. So all of them, the scattered, and the people even among the Hamites, they're going to bring the offering too. That's beyond the river of Ethiopia, sisters and brothers. So how many people in Ethiopia, white people call themselves Ethiopians? Proof is in the pudding, ain't it? Now let's go to the last place. But we're going to return now. 
to the fall of Judah, and we're going to finish it. Back to Luke 21. Luke 21. Because we know this thing is right around the corner, sister and brother. Because the Lord's in the days of these kings. That's why I keep watching that common market. I keep watching it. And I keep watching Israel going to build that temple. Because we're in the days of these kings. This got to happen quick, sisters and brothers. We, it's almost over with. Luke 21 and 20. Luke 21 and verse 20. Read it. And when ye shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is not. Know that it's ready, getting ready to be destroyed. We showed you that. Skip down to verse 24 and go ahead. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. Go ahead. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And as we read that, but until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Go ahead. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves ruined. Now he gave it a sign, didn't he? Yeah. About the sun. And the moon and the stars, the sun going to turn black, the moon red, and the stars of the heaven going to fall. He went from the time when we got taken out in 70 A.D. to the coming of the Lord to let you know that this thing is in order. Go ahead and read. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. Uh -huh. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Going to be a lot of heart attacks at that time. Go ahead. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Go ahead. And when these things begin to come to pass. And when these things begin to come to pass, go ahead. Then look up. Then look up, O Israel. And lift up your head. And lift up your heads. For your redemption draws nigh. Because your redemption draws near. But thus when you see the sun go out, turn black, the moon red, and the stars fall. And the coming of Jesus, then he said, lift up the hand and go, that's when you're going to be redeemed. He said, draw near, but you ain't going to be redeemed before the Lord comes, sisters and brothers. But skip down to verse 31, and look at what Jesus said here, 31 and 32. Go ahead and read. So likewise ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. He said, so when you see all this stuff that we've been talking about today come to pass, Know that the kingdom of God is at hand. Go ahead and read. Verily I say unto you, uh -huh. this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. And sisters and brothers, the Lord knows in my heart, I think this is that generation that he's talking about. Why? Because we're looking at the European Union, and the Lord said, in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. That's why the Lord had, had me write the four winds of heaven. All of this stuff is here. And it's accurate, and it is on the button. You know why? Because it is what thus said the Lord. I thank you for your time. Yes, sir.